this is Bruce Klepp's Garage. Well, it's a beautiful day, Bob. <laughs> it's snowing here in, in uh, Ohio, and we got ice and snow on the ground. My friend Greg come out today. We're going to work on the Mustang motor, check the uh, bearing clearances and uh, the bottom end. So we thought we'd show you how nice it is out here, and uh, we'll go inside and work where it's warm. Take that off. <laughs> God, just drop it in. Yeah, there you go. Well, it didn't leak out too much. Left the rubber thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't you hate I that? Make sure the rubber. Hey, oh, we're filming. Hey, watch this. See this thing? If that gets stuck to your block and then you put your next filter on, guess what happens? You start the motor and it blows oil all over your shop. Everywhere. Done it. I got Everywhere. the t shirt. Got the t shirt. Been it's there. And the t shirt's oil. So we are uh, using speed wrench. Oh yeah, speed wrench. And uh, getting everything off there. The idea with speed Ooh. wrenches, you go fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fat, really fast. But he, he had a tough bolt, so that one might be cross threaded from the last right. from the last guy. So it looks okay. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a feeling that somebody used a lot of permatex. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Like they used a lot of Permatex one night. Yeah, I'm gonna try just tapping along here at the edge with the screwdriver. Get it. Yeah, it feels like it. Well, the reason some of those, uh, some of the uh, bolts had a lot of Permatex. Like way more than you need. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. There you go. There you go. I'll let you grab that. Mm. It's got a lot of uh, yeah, debris in the. Yep. Not bad, but it's and it's not. I don't think it's metal. Yeah, it's, it's just crap. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. So uh, we got a little crud in the bottom. We're going to see what that does. Take a magnet and see if you see if it picks it out of there. If it's a, you know if it's metal. See if we got any metal in there. All right, so we start wiping this out. This is what happens when you set a car around for 20 years. It develops sludge in the bottom. So this is really just sludge. Kind of interesting over here. There's the inside of the motor. Look at this giant counterweight here. This thing's massive. And uh, Greg pointed out somebody's had this apart before because they've, they've stamped the caps so they knew how to put them back on. The factory doesn't do that, at least not on this motor. It's got a new chain. Ooh, new timing chain. New chain. Pretty. Nice and tight. Yeah, ooh, yeah, nice and tight. Somebody's marked a cam down there with something. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those came from the factory with a marking on them. You know, different color for a different uh, Anyhow, we're going to take a couple caps off and see what this looks like. All right, so uh, Greg's got uh, number two rod cap off. Uh, actually, it looks pretty decent here. Got a little wear right there. We're going to plastic gauge it, see what it shows. And uh, you guys out there, and uh, you know, when you rebuild them, you just mic them. You don't use plastic gauge anymore, but we're not tearing this motor apart. We're going to use what's known as plastic gauge, which is this little tiny piece of plastic that you put in here, you put the cap back on, tighten it down, smash it, and then you measure the distance. So we'll show you how we do that. So he's applied the piece of uh, 
plastic gauge on there. Now we're going to put the cap on. He's going to put the cap on there and tighten it up. We'll tighten it down to the torque specifications and you take it back off and measure that. So we'll show you what happens after you do that. <laughs> yeah, if you add the crankshaft out, you could snap gauge the, the uh, opening with the bearing crushed in it and then you could snap gauge or you could uh, use a mic on the crank and then you could figure out the difference. But when you're not going to take the crankshaft out, then you have to use plastic gauge. I also use this on my old Model T Fords. That's really the only way you can check them. And uh, we've, we use this a lot. Uh, trouble is you can't hardly buy this stuff anymore because nobody uses it. It's kind of getting hard to find, but it's still available through sealed power. So right now we're putting a torque to it. And then uh, since he's got that done, we'll take the cap back off and then we'll measure it. So if you can see it, we have it smashed in there and it's then you put a piece of paper and tells you what the measurement is and the mark is right here. We're at a thousandth and a half. That's right where it needs to be. All right, so right now he's shoving the bearing back down in there, getting the tang lined up. There's a little tiny piece tab. sticking out, a little tab, and we call it the tang. And there's one on this side here. Right there. And now he'll line those two up. We'll put it back together. We're gonna to put a little oil on it, a little uh, white lift grease on the nuts so they torque down good. And put this one back together. Well, we'll go through the rest of this. We're figuring out if we're gonna do all of them or if we're just gonna do some of them. We're gonna check a main and uh, yeah, go from there. I got the master engine mechanic working today. <laughs> he can at least tear it apart, nothing else. Yeah, I can get it torn apart. We're Put good it. at tearing things apart. Put it back together is the problem. <laughs> oh, you want that back together so you want it, it works? You want it to work? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's basically an old steel bar and it bends and this arm gives you the torque, which these, these were made forever. But this one's really, really cool because it was made like in the 30s, supposedly. But you can see where we're going to 30 pounds, right? Right there. there. Yeah. And that's the torque on it. Yeah. Why use one of those fancy ones that clicks? This is more fun. This is more fun because you get to actually see it. Like I said, you gonna work on old cars, you gotta have old, old tools. Old tools. <laughs> And it helps if there's an old man to run the old yeah, tools. Yeah, old man to run the old tools. I'm the old man. That's <laughs> great that you're older than I am, very too. <laughs> All right, so one done and dusted. Now we'll see what else we want to do. All right. Look at the size of that weight. Oh, oh my God, God, that's God, huge. It's ridiculous. What do you say we take that one off? And the main? This is, this is so good that I'm sure yeah. that these are fine. Oh, I'm sure. So, well, would number one main wear more than the rest? Yes, it would. Number Let's one number and one. Num and the rear main would. But uh, and your check thrust, number one. thrust flange is on the rear one too. So yeah, yeah, thrust flange. Thrust flange keeps the crank from going this way as it's running. Wow, this is weird. My hand's moving, and on the video, it's delayed. <laughs> and, all right, number one main cap is off. So Greg's going to explain what we're looking at here. We got one little tiny score on the crankshaft, but it's not enough to, to mention. You can catch your fingernail on it though, so it is a little score. But we've got no copper showing on these bearings, and usually if you're into the copper, they need to be replaced. But these are, these are really, really clean looking, so see no reason to stop running it. Yeah, get this all nicened up. Maybe I can run it on the old Route 66, the mother road, and take a little cruise with the top down. Not have to worry about the motor falling apart. All okay, right. So there is the, what do we call this? Plastic gauge. Yeah, plastic. <laughs> there it is. There it is, right there before you smash it. All right. Now we're gonna smash it. All right, so we got this one plastic gauged and we're right at a thousand, just a hair over. So that was pretty tight, uh, but it, it didn't score up the bearing, so I think well, I think we're okay. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, yeah, looks good. A little tighter than I like them, but for we like them tight. As long as you're not going to be revving it out to like eight grand, I think you'll be safe. Yeah, I don't think this motor's going to do eight grand. <laughs> so we're 
retorquing the front two uh, main caps. He took them to 30 first. He's going up to 50. And we're going to top out. What are you talking about at? 60, I think, would be we're probably plenty. Going to but 60. Whoever puts this motor together, I count them out at 100 because we have a hard time getting them off. Actually, Greg did. I didn't do nothing but point and whistle. <laughs> There's yeah. 60. And then we're going to take the oil pump part next and check the clearances on that. Make sure we got good oil pressure. There's 60. I'm going to just put put one on here and see if see where they were at. Well, I'll, I'll get. I'm just going to. I'm curious to see. Try and loosen it and see what it does. Well, it's over 75 right now. It's not moving. So well, we somebody had them at about 75 to 80 pounds. I think we're going to retorque all them. Oh, it moved it. It moved at 60, so. Okay. But. Just a hard 60. Oh my God. No, it's mm. up to 90. Yeah, you're true. Yeah, up. it went up to 90 pounds. I'm trying to break them loose and somebody had to set it 90. That's, yeah. That's just stupid. They're probably using an impact gun on them. Yeah, they did something. Cross there and put a feeler gauge under it and you'll be able to tell how many thousandths of an inch the difference is between this and this. And if it's uh, around a thousand, it'll give you at least 60 PSI. Uh, we popped the uh, oil pump bottom off to uh, check, make sure the tube is clean on the pickup. And then also wanted to see what this looks like. Most of these are gear drive. This is like a rotary engine. This must be a Mazda oil pump. I'm gonna have to get to my uh, friend Aaron next door. He's got a Mazda. So uh, maybe we can uh, put this on his Mazda. So we're gonna check this out, see how it, how it works and uh, make sure the clearances are right. Broke off one of the bolts over here. I'm going to show you a trick on how I get a bolt out without drilling it. It might involve welding. <laughs> My favorite thing to do. <laughs> so come over here and show them this bolt that's broke off. So right here is the bolt that's nice and cleanly broke off right there. And uh, so we just lay this nut on there. I'm going to fill that full weld and we let the heat from the weld penetrate and then we'll back it out of there hopefully this works I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna set this on. So I've, uh, I've filled it clear up with weld. That little thing there will plink off because that's cast iron and it won't stick to cast iron. So we're going to let that cool a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll get a wrench on it. Okay, so I'll let this set a little bit. Whoopsie. Okay, we got to do it again. And that's okay. So we're going to get a little more heat penetration down on there. So we'll do it one more time. You know, I just tell my friend Sandy from Texas how you do this, and I told him it won't work because we're doing it on film, so this will be the second try. Okay, it looks like it's turning. Tell you what, I'm going to screw a little oil underneath there. See if we can get the rest way without without plinking it off. Well, that's man, that was tight the whole way. It must have been rusted in there from the top side. These holes go all the way through. Never would have got this out with a tap. We would have had to drill it, and that's no fun at all. This is a lot more fun. Man, 
and there you go. I suppose you could use that for a new bolt, but I wouldn't suggest that. Now we'll clean this up, and yeah, it's good as new. All right, so everything's cleaned up, got the, out, ready to go. I start putting stuff away. So this, uh, this is a nice little leather coat you're supposed to wear when you're welding, but I kind of use it to keep weld splatter off everything else. It's so handy. Uh, I never have weld splatter up in my face, so I use this for a cover. So we got to use Mr. Hobart today. We got to check the bearings. It was a good day. So Greg is leaving the building. He, he wanted to show you his toolbox. Yeah. It's a priority box. It's a priority box. Move your hand a little bit. <laughs> Let's see that priority toolbox. <laughs> this is my mobile toolbox. So we had a, an afternoon uh, boys, boys day out. We had big fun. Mr. Cummins sounds so good. Well, that's probably going to do it for this episode of Clef's Garage. See you next time when we put the motor back in. Don't forget, drive them if you got them. Especially if you got a Cummins. Ooh. Cummins. Damn, that must be a 20 speed. <laughs>